Uh, of course, now I can't find. There we go. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, we'll call this meeting to order. This is the um, joint meeting of the subcommittees of the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen. Um, this is Tuesday, August 11th. Uh, it's 5.06 p.m. And um, this is the subcommittees are dealing with the FY 2021 warrant and budget. And um, First item on the agenda is just to approve the minutes of the previous meetings. And do you want to go ahead and do that? Dan, before you do that, can I just ask, We there's someone on the call that's joined. Their name comes up as owner. Not really sure who that is. So okay. if they could star six and let us know. <clears throat> o owner, can you hear us? Oh. Hello? Star six to unmute, otherwise I can uh, do whatever you need with that one, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Who else are you looking for here? <laughs> well, we don't have um, Angelo. I don't, he was trying to get on and we don't have um, Don Howell. Well, we won't have Don. Uh, Don oh. just got through an operation and uh, yeah. I had to go back to see the surgeon today, and I, I think he's pretty much under the weather in a big way. So, all right. So the only one we're trying to get on, if he can, is Angelo, but um, I don't know who owner is. I think we just proceed and and um, see if we can put together some questions and answers and go that yeah, route. That's fine. That's Do fine. Do you want to approve minutes? Can we get a motion for that or? Uh, sure, I I, uh, I moved that we approve the minutes of the previous meeting. What, what was the date? Uh, I should say the date. The date um, is uh, for the July 28th meeting. Uh, I moved that we approve the meetings for the July 28th meeting. Yeah. Is there a second, second. John? Okay. Second. Yep, Steve approved, seconded by John. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Sorry. I should do a roll call on these because we're all remote. So. Yeah, you should. Yeah. So Steve Ford, A, aye. Aye. John Troy, aye. 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 Yeah. All right. So that takes care of the minutes. Um, the next thing I had, um, I sent out um, a copy of um, articles. And it just, I just wanted to have a general discussion on um, the mechanics of that, and maybe Carol can help us with that. I didn't know if this year was different because of COVID and all the rules that go with that. Do we have to have a town meeting article that approves the return of these articles? Does the money go into the general fund? Does it become available right away? I was just wondering, is this something we can count on in May as some type of reserve or use funds we can use people returning articles i know um joe at the department head meeting you had um stressed to department heads i think that they um should look at their old articles and stuff like that um somebody did i heard but um i guess some people are starting to turn in old articles and i didn't know what happens with that carol you can go first yep. okay so on an annual basis, I request um, department heads to release article balances for um, work that has been completed and perhaps there's a small amount of money left or maybe it's even a larger amount than, um, than what they needed. Um, and that happens on an annual basis. But this year um, when Joe and I met, uh, you know, we talked about um, asking departments to take a second look um, and to really scrutinize the article balances to um, and and report to us, let us know which which articles, um, in addition to the ones that they already were released or confirmed that they were carrying forward, um, could be released. And and so the departments um, followed suit, and um, and there were some um, uh, amounts that were released. Uh, those get released, and they um, end up falling to free cash um, for. Um, 
the town to use and the purposes in which how they would use free cash. Um, so they don't have to go to town meeting to be um, to confirm that release. Um, uh, they can just be done through our regular processes and we're closing the fiscal year. So those would be if we close in time available for September? As long as free cash is certified by before the meeting, yes. Okay. So um, another area where some funds are available if, if, if they come forward in time, correct? Correct. And there's been over um, $300,000 that's been released. Um, a large portion of that was in DPW. Um, they had two items. One of them was um, sidewalks um, that um, they were working with um, the Department of Transportation with, and they were getting nowhere, and they've gotten nowhere with them. Um, and so um, the DPW director uh, released those funds. Um, in addition to that, there was another article. Um, it was about $50,000, um, and um, the town had been looking for a, a grant um, and um, was um, denied on a few occasions, and so that money was being released as well. Um, and then there were some other smaller amounts that were released, but you know it, the, it stems close to you know three hundred thousand dollars or right. more. Questions, John? I know you looked at this list pretty hard. Uh, uh, I, I didn't hear what uh, what you said there, John. I didn't know if you had some questions or if Steve had some questions. I know, John, you looked at the list. These were the the four capital items. Oh. No, the returned articles, the article list. Oh, oh, I yeah, I had a lot. Oh, I didn't. Oh, the return article list. The articles I them, outstanding. Yeah, well, I got a, a lot of questions. That's a two-hour meeting. <laughs> well, we well, I don't think we have two hours, but if you had right. some. Right. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the biggest one right off the top of the head is for me is, is Brooks Park lighting and why that hasn't been done when they're asking for more money for the White House field lights. Uh, but that's, again, that's a, this is a bigger, much more bigger discussion. So I'll, I'll just pass. All so, right, John, just show though, there's a quick answer on that one. As everybody knows, there was a, um, a change in personnel and a, a roadblock on procurement. Um, there's been um, a lot of work done on a lot of those projects. Uh, we have the engineering that we need for that project. So there's every expectation that's going to continue on and more progress will be made the next few months that have made than has been made in the last few years. So uh, okay, I, would, well, that's, that's, I would be able to speak to a lot of those if need be. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just, well, we'll discuss it later because I don't think there's much progress been made at all, Joe. And, and, let, uh, me, I, let, me, let me try so. framing the question a different way. You, John, have any questions that you think are policy questions for the Board of Selectmen that they could address? No, no. Okay. It's, just, it's, tough. it's just this particular article and how other articles have been handled in the past. Okay. Where we, right. we ask for one price and we go back to town meeting and ask for hundreds of thousands of dollars more for other, uh, other projects. So, again, right. it's, it's more than just this. It sounds somewhat philosophical too. So you guys are going to take this okay. offline and, and discuss it sometime? Yeah, yeah, I've been trying to discuss it for, for, for years. Every time we meet with the department heads, I bring it up and every year meeting it, it, it's, we'll get back to you. All right. Maybe uh, a one-on-one -on -one with Joe, if that's possible at some point, um, would help straighten that out? Sure, yeah. All right. Yeah, I, think the, I think the answers are there, Dana. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there is great uh, uh, focus and scrutiny by both Carol and Joe uh, toward the budget, uh, towards where we can save, uh, i.e., for example, listen to what uh, Carol just said relative to money being returned. Yeah. Um, I, I did have a question in that regard. Uh, Carol, what, what was the total from DBW? I did talk to Link, but I, I couldn't, um, I, I'm sorry, for some reason, part of what you said on my phone was, was blacked out. So I just wanted to see what the end number was from DPW. So I don't, I don't have that document in front of me. I'm sorry, I can send it to you, but it was over $300,000. That's great. 
That's great. Okay. Okay. I'll compile right. that document um, with the first round of returns and then the second uh, request, and so you can you'll have that in one document. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, I also um, put under there um, any possible discussions on on all of the other things we have going. I think we should try to make some headway yeah. on revolving accounts. Um, uh, Dana, I think I can just uh, you know. The, I could just ad address the stabilization first quickly to get that off the agenda. Um, relative to the stabilization, we discussed it at the selectmen's meeting. Uh, we are all in agreement with you that there should be a uh, placeholder in the warrant uh, for an article relative to the use of stabilization funds. Yep. Uh, the thing that did come out of it, though, was that uh, they do not want to attach a number to it at this point in time. Right. Um, but but everyone does feel uh as you did that there should be uh an article place a uh, placeholder in the warrant right and to, to that end steve um the finance committee um voted to um at least for the printing of the warrants they voted to make no recommendation pending further information that was our official vote on that one um as you know okay. that says that we're not going to decide this until after the warrants printed after it goes. So we, we put that one to bed that way and uh, it will just show up in the warrant as we have nothing um, until town meeting. At town meeting, we'll have to make a recommendation. And again, my hope is, is it's to uh, definitely postpone it, but um, um, you know, we have it in the toolbox as we wanted. So the finance committee right. has taken no recommendation. Right. right? As, yeah. Um, uh, also, as relates to um, the warrant, um, was discussed again last night. I think I don't know whether you were on the call last night. No, I was Dana, but uh, but uh, we are beginning to vote on all the articles in the warrant uh, starting on Monday, this coming Monday, um, and uh, we're trying to move quickly to make sure that that you guys get our position on all the articles as soon as possible. So hopefully that moves very quickly. All right, so um, the finance committee voted three more at our last meeting, so we're up to like uh, 32 or 33 or so of the of the total. So I think uh, you already have our positions on these. Um, there was one article that we had indefinitely postponed, um, which was um, one of the um, CPC articles. We have since um, uh, voted to reconsider that article and right now have that on hold. Um, we would just, um, it was hopefully a question with Dawn, but uh, had to do with the salary portion of that article. But um, um, we voted the other CPC articles except for that one and uh, in favor of all. Okay. Of so, yeah, I mean, I think it'll, uh, from everything I could determine from our meeting, it would move along very quickly. I mean, Joe can comment on that too, but. Uh, I think that's, you know, we'll, we'll turn this around quickly. Yeah. Um, the other issue on the capital plan, uh, there was a general consensus that, uh, you know, if they're, uh, you know, not to go down the road that Dana was talking about, which was the one year and so forth, that, you know, the effort was put into the capital plan uh, and to stick with that. So. You mean that Don was talking about? Don, I, I'm sorry. I, my apologies. Dana was talking about seven years. Yeah, I know. It's, it's been a long day, Dana. Sorry. Yeah, trust me, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, and and um, I don't know if this would work, Joe. Uh, if, if maybe you and I could just run through the capital plan at some time and compare notes as to where we think we are to bring help bring forward. Um, I'm willing. Yeah, That'll work, Carol. Carol's already done an effort and I'm working off of that. Okay. Um, so I can build off of Carol's work, touch base with you, and um, we'll, we can go from there. Um, before you moved on to Capitol, though, I did have a question for you. I'm going to um, show for whoever can see it um, what I got from you on the uh, FinCom votes from your last meeting, I think. Right. I don't know if you can see that. So. I had questions for you on the on the document because um, uh, let me see I I noticed something that you had that was free cash that I didn't have as free cash and vice versa. Can I um, can I work off of your minutes or something to just um, 
confirm that because I'm writing articles and explanations as fast as I can. Yeah, and um, um, I, I can I can um, re just recheck all of mine and make sure that I have the right thing next to the right vote. Okay. All right. And I'll send you that in a separate email. So uh, on that list that you can see right now, Article 30, we just have on hold. We have taken away the uh, indefinite postponement, the one in there. So that one now is just um, a um, on hold. And then the next three we voted um, to accept in the draft, the, the next three, uh, the, the lighting and the fencing and the playground. I'll get the exact votes for you. Uh, there were people there that night, but some of them were not unanimous. So I'll get those votes for you and you'll be as to where we are. Um, we have two meetings this week, tomorrow and Thursday. Hopefully we can um, make some more progress, but um, that that's kind of where we are and uh, we'll keep plugging at it and hopefully we get enough done to be able to go to print. We have two meetings this week and then we have Friday the 21st as our last meeting before we turn it over to your team to, to print it. Any other questions on the warrant right at the moment? I will also, I will also tell you, Dana, that the selectmen are in agreement that, you know, if we feel we're getting behind on getting stuff approved and getting uh, um, in sync with you guys, that we're going to add extra meetings uh, okay. in order to address these things. All right. Yeah, um, like I said, we had, we put on a, at least before it goes to print, we put on a full court press on our side just to try and get as much information to the voters um, as possible. Um, and the rest are going to be no recommendation pending further information. So um, we're trying to get that list as small as possible. So the voters, once they get the warrant in their hands two weeks before town meeting, can see kind of what we're thinking. Um, which brings me to um, the other two articles I'd like to at least talk about are the revolving fund articles. Um, I just don't. I know that um, from our point of view that um, the two articles, one is Article 36, and um, that one is, um, we got a lot of feedback from somebody. John, are you opening packages again? Hello? John? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Welcome to download. We want you to be able to Oh, whoa, whoa. John, John, can you mute Joe? Are you possible to mute? John. Oh, boy. I didn't mute him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not good, I guess. I don't know. All right, I'll let you see How was that? Okay, on that article, um, I, I don't think there's a lot of support from the Finance Committee right at the moment to expand a bunch of departments um, into um, more money and more usages, especially for personnel. Um, I think we're, in that case, um, we're going to have to talk to each group, or unless Joe can address it, but... Um, I think the Finance Committee needs more information on those before we're going to vote it. But right at the moment, until we get something that changes our mind, I would say that we're not supporting that article at this point. But we haven't taken a vote, so I don't know that for sure. Just in the discussion, seem to be going that way. Dana, I can tell you that, oh, and Joe, please correct me if you think my impression is wrong, but... Uh, um, obviously, we haven't voted on anything on this either, but uh, I, I think the sentiment is very similar in the in the uh, select board. Okay, and um, you know, in that case, maybe that article comes out if we're not ready for it. Um, unless you think someone for the floor is going to do a positive motion, but um, that's up to you guys. Um, the other article is the money. Well, Dan, before you go on to the money, can I just ask and um, I heard some feedback. I want to make sure it wasn't me. 
So uh, what you see right there in front of you is just a truncated version of what we had from last year. It does not represent uh, a fully vetted article yet. Um, but when you say that the Finance Committee is not um, looking to go forward on these, um, have you thought about the mechanics of that action? In other words, we're in the fiscal year, and if we have uh, funds that have been going into the revolving fund, are you saying that we're removing the authorization to spend and then the companion action then would be on, as you can see, um, you know, a draft here and my notes here. Um, because, you know, I'm trying to use all the resources we have available. Right. We have revolving funds that are available that can take pressure off the deficit. I'd hate to give up any financial management tool at this point. Okay. Um, so did you did you talk about the mechanism or the what the end result might be of those actions? No. In fact, I thought that um, I was under the impression that so so the part that's underlined is the only new part. These are all existing um, funds in this article. So it's to add to their um, abilities. Hi, it's Carol. Yes, it is to add their, to their abilities. And um, the first one, the community center, the community center runs like exercise programs and educational programs for um, an example of Monomoy students to prepare for SAT exams. And that was coming out of recreation revolving. And they had said to me, well, it's always come out of recreation revolving. And I said, but it's not a recreation program. It's not run by the rec director. It's run by the community center. And it indeed should fall under the community center. Um, so that was the, the first one. That was the change um, to incorporate the use of the funds um, for the exercise and educational programs that they run out of the community center. Um, the, the second one was a specific uh, request from um, the Conservation Commission. I believe their spending limit on conservation is $6,000 a year. And they wanted to be able to, um, to um, use that fund for uh, restoration projects and uh, management of um, the conservation. Now, the third one is the one where I think there's a whole bunch of questions around why do we need um, a part-time part-time salaries to come out of cemetery revolving, and and that's a bigger discussion that I think needs to be made, needs to be you know uh, um, occur. Um, so so, but anyway, it's just the history on the other two um, were just as I described um, to you. Uh, I don't believe that there's currently any additional funding going into those that. Um, that, are, that we're anticipating um, the support of the expansion of the use. All right, so okay. on the um, community center one, does that, is that number there now 75% of their funds from the weight room go into um, the, the rec program now? Yes, prior to fiscal year 20, 100% went in. Um, starting in fiscal year 20, um, this are, there was an article that went to town meeting um, and it reduced that 100% to 75%. So right now, 15% goes into the general fund to support the general fund. 25%. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. And that, and that the way it brings in some ninety thousand dollars on, on a typical year yes i mean when when just historically when that first started the weight room first started and we started charging for the very first time um the finance committee back then i was on the board of selectmen at the time didn't have any budget for um money to go back into the weight room to replace weights and all that kind of stuff and um, the, the Board of Selectmen asked them to at least, we put in $1,000 just to start something to go towards putting money back into the actual weights and equipment and all that stuff. I, I'm just wondering if 25% a year of the total um, addresses something like that. The re actual weight room itself being 
cared for by the that money instead of it going to pay somebody to hold a class. So 75% stays in the fund, the revolving fund, which is used to maintain that equipment and replace that equipment, as well as it contains um, a part-time a part-time person to work in the um, weight room. Um, I, I think it's a 19 hour a week position. Um, so 75% so of the funds that it raises in membership fees does is retained in that fund and has been supported. Specifically for the weight room, right, Carol? That's correct, it's specifically for the yeah. weight room. You know, I, I think uh, to go back to my comment earlier, uh, the real concern that I heard from a couple of my colleagues on the select board was mainly in that third reference you made, Carol, uh, not to the weight room or to the CONCOM or not to the community center or the CONCOM, but to the use of uh, the revolving funds for a salary. Uh, and I think that's where the real concern was. And, you know, I don't know where the resolution comes out on that one. So do, will this, if we were to move this to um, community center as a lateral move, does that mean that we'd be reducing the recreation um, a total that they would be spending in and out? I mean, or does this change that? That's a great question. Last year, I was watching very closely the um, the total spending limit of the recreation and and Eric Beebe, the rec director, had to go before the board of selectmen and have temporary increases in FY19 um, on um, the maximum spending level. And then at town meeting, um, of course, the warrant was already drawn up and he had um, increased at twenty five thousand dollars. So the um, the these expenses that were generated by the community center that were um, going through recreation really increased um, that to like two hundred thousand um, dollars. So he was going over he he was going over without any temporary, I guess, approval by the board of selectmen, which is allowed by general law. But it doesn't help to. I don't think that you're going to be able to reduce it. It's at 175,000, and that's typically what the rec di director spends on his programs. And in all these cases, none of the money goes back into the general fund if it goes over. Um, that's correct. Um, the way that the, these are um, the general law in which these are established. Um, I think I sent that information out. If I recall. Um, allows for um, the the fund to retain the, any balances that um, remain at the end of the fiscal year. Um, it's just to help my understanding of it, Carol, we, there's a, and uh, sorry, John, I got to mention pickleball, but there's a, there's a portion of the FP that goes, does that go to the general fund? A portion of pickleball's fees go to the cultural center when they were playing in the building. Okay. The, other, the rest of the fees go into recre it's a recreation program. It goes to recreation revolving. All right. So I guess my question to the Board of Selectmen would be as a policy, and, and I don't know if it can be done, but I would think that on all revolving accounts, on all fees that we charge, that some type of overhead needs to come back to the general fund. And I don't know if that can be done or structured or how it's done. What do you, what do you, what do you mean by overhead? Um, well, there, there's um, a lot of preparation of fields. There's a lot of preparation of rooms. There's a lot of accounting. There's a lot of um, um, treasury. So are, you that, so are you saying that revenue that is received into the revolving funds that goes beyond, you know, what their annual is should then be somehow returned to help with the maintenance mm -hmm. um, or as you call it, overhead. Is that what you're saying? Room prep and all that stuff. I'm thinking that that somehow each fee, like when when the Board of Selectmen propose and, and put together a fee, um, if it, the entire thing goes into the general fund, it goes into the general fund. Um, yeah, no, I'm just trying all to, Dana, I'm just, all, all I'm, all I'm try, Dana, all I'm trying to do is get the question so I can pose it to the right. selectmen. Yeah, yeah. 
My question would be, can we structure fees that are in revolving funds, those fee structures, can they be structured like uh, if they're paying $55 to pay a, play a season of pickleball or whatever, can 10% of that go into the general fund somehow? Can that fee be structured that way? I will obviously, uh, you know, gotta, uh, Carol, if you, if you want to chime in as to whether you think that's doable, I can certainly ask the select on that question too. Well, I mean, I, I, I think we'd have to separate it this out and, and maybe you have to be fair right along all the revolving funds. But um, I know, or I believe that the uh, recreation department sets the fees uh, uh, based on the costs that they incur in the revolving fund. And so I think you'd be looking at increased fees, which is fine. It's just, you know, just so that you know that as um, for that purpose um, there. Um, and then I don't know how you would structure that for like the cultural center where you're renting out those rooms and those are all going into a revolving fund. And if you were looking for overhead right now, the board or FY20 and prior, um, the board had set a five year goal that they would subsidize that cultural center. Um, on an annual basis. Now we may have some changes moving forward because they've amassed quite a, um, a balance in their revolving fund. So we may we may be proposing to the Board of Selectmen some changes, but I just wonder how we would structure those fees and whether they have to be um, fair across the board. I, I'm not sure. And I guess I'd have to look at the general law to see what that would allow for. Okay. I just, well, it's certainly a question. You know, it's certainly a question, Dana, that I can pose um, to the to the select board. So, you know, we'll we'll see what kind of reaction we get. I know there's some pretty strong feelings about you know revolving funds, generally speaking. So, we'll come back to you on that question. All right. I just think um, in the general discussion on revolving funds, we got to have to talk about um, whether or not to. Um, and I and it, can, it can, certainly can't be done in time for. Uh, this meeting, I don't think whether or not we should be working towards putting some of the annual stuff into the budget, the the cost and the fees, and make I sure that, that the fees are appropriate for not only covering the program itself, um, but for covering, um, you know, what what it. I mean, buildings have to be operated, and, and um, no, I, I I got I got where you're coming from. Okay, all right. I'm just, Dana, uh, sorry. go ahead. Anybody, uh, this is John again. I didn't try to work the buttons here. Uh, just a quick question on that. When you said overhead, do you mean like this is just an example? I just want to understand it. Uh, if, if, uh, if DPW mows the ball field, do they want to get paid for that, Dana? Is that what you mean? I, I'm thinking that, that all of the activities that prepare rooms inside or out yeah. all the the heat and and electricity and all those things across the town in general i can't discuss any specific department but there's accounting okay. on there's um there's um treasury stuff that goes on there's a lot of town effort just like from the water department which is an enterprise fund a whole different ballgame but we do get a portion of the money back to the town to cover some of that part of the operation. Here's a million dollars worth of, of activity going on out there and the town gets zero out of it as far as these facilities that the activities are going on in, in, in as near as I can see. So I just think it's... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying on overhead, but yeah, you know, the town does the town does get value here. So let's, let's not, you know, <laughs> I mean, the people of the town enjoy the programs that are created as a result of this. So, you know, I, I understand completely what you're trying to do, which is focus in on, on what the actual cost is of providing uh, these services. Taking you know, pressure so. off the budget again. Uh, um, I mean, th there's got to be ways we can take pressure off the budget. And, and in the process of this subcommittee, I think that we're open to looking at at everything. I was thinking on the the water and sewer budget. Uh, the water we get a, a, a portion back, 
What about sewer? Are we going to get a portion back from that? It's a different kind of fund, but should they be building into whatever they're doing, um, the same as water, some portion of that fund? I think we're looking at everything kind of anew right now. Yeah. Uh, so, Dana, can I speak to that for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, all, all of that is actually uh, in place. All of those discussions are things that Carol and I have talked about. And um, as we progress uh, through this process, uh, we'll have more, I'll have more updates. But um, a lot of what you've talked about are pending me having conversations with the department heads, because I think it's appropriate for me to speak to them first about all the different financial management tools that we may be using. Um, and everything you just mentioned is on the table. Um, but I didn't want you or any of your, anyone of your committee or the selectmen to think that, that we're not reviewing that. We are and everything's in play. Um, we, I think when I say we, I think all of us on this call understand where we're at financially and what we need to get through on September 26th. So um, I just don't want you all to leave this meeting thinking that it hasn't been considered. It's not some of the things that you're talking about may already be in play. I just need to go through a process. Okay. So I have um, I have a department head meeting every week now. This week is going to be on Thursday, and I've got a few calls already set up to further those conversations. So in that light, it is beneficial that we keep talking about things because it right, raises exactly. Yep. Absolutely. All right, Carol. Could I mention something, please? I just want to be just going back to the revolving funds and the discussion about salaries, part-time salaries. Yeah. Um, so yeah. right now you have part-time salaries coming out of Council on Aging revolving fund, the cultural center, the community center, the golf pro shop and recreation. Just, just so that you know, you do already have um, quite a number of departments that have part-time salaries coming from those funds. Yeah, and I, I think I understand that. And I think it's one of those things that probably snuck up on me and, and um, wasn't fully aware of that. Um, but I also think that we should, between now and May, look sincerely at putting those in budgets and having part of the fees cover that instead of doing it through a revolving fund. I think that, as Dawn has said, even in one of the few areas we agree on, having um, the people managed by um, unpaid volunteers in some cases um, just uh, kind of gets to a spot that maybe we shouldn't be in as a town, just as a thought. But it's a good discussion and I hope we, I know um, a couple of board members, um, maybe you included, Steve, have talked about uh, really wanting to get into it. And I think that that's, that's a worthy discussion that, that we break it down and we figure these things out. And I'm Dana, can I ask, can I ask a procedural question of everybody? Uh, recognizing that this is not my first annual town meeting, but my first annual town meeting in Harwich, I want to make sure I'm capturing everything correctly. So in that particular uh, instance, there was the reference to the part-time position in that department and using revolving funds. Is that con considered a new position and what is required through the town's processes of adding new positions? Is, uh, you know, does that have to go before town meeting? Does it have to, is it something that I would do through administration? What's the expectation if that article were to go forward in that manner, how would we actually acquire or have that position to then advertise? I think um, historically, um, all it was actually in the, the charter. There's been several changes to the charter over the years. I don't remember specifically if that is still in there or it's gone. But um, it is in the charter that all the positions will be brought to town meeting. Now, it used to be they were brought in a separate article and approved separately from the budget and that money would be raised and appropriated and, and uh, put into the budget that way. Um, since then, um, over the last couple of, of administrations, they've been, it's been coming in as, well, they're in the budget, they're new, and we just talk about it at town meeting rather than um, a separate article for them. I think uh, transparency-wise, my position would be that's fine. Uh, we all want to know about all of it. Is that John again? John, who's making all the noise? Uh, I just uh, think 
is I mean, to make um, all of the uh, anything new position wise known to people. Um, and if these people are being positioned without benefits and all that stuff, that should be known as well. I mean, I just think it's a, it's a transparency thing. And, and I, I totally appreciate the response regarding transparency. You know, my question is just because my reading of the charter and I'm got it right here. Um, it says under administrative reorganization that any new full-time compensated position um, that the board approves has to be funded by a vote of town meeting. So this is a part-time position. There's a funding mechanism for so-called, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing any other um, procedural requirements to put that um, whole discussion in jeopardy. I do not know the answer to that. I, I would actually think that, uh, that that's worth running by legal, but um, I, I personally don't know if that's in any violation or not. I think it's it's um, important that we talk about them as we go to each town meeting, um, but um, they, they, you know they, they were very, like I said it snuck up on me. Yeah. Um, they're they're very obscure in that one sentence uh, as to what the uses can be, and yeah. all of a sudden uh, we don't know if it's five people, we don't know if it's ten people, we don't know if. It's, 50% of the revolving fund is going towards people we, and the rest of the program money has been squeezed. I, I have no idea what the mix is. So I think that part of it is uh, correct no matter what. I think town meeting deserves transparency on it no matter what. Uh, well, I will convey your thoughts. <laughs> like I said, it's worthy discussions, but um probably uh uh the the whatever numbers get written in i know joe you're still putting the the articles themselves together but um um probably nothing can really really change for this town meeting um on the second article the article 37 as we have it with the, the actual limits because we don't i think have time to change budgets and fix that and do all those things uh, but uh, I, so I see that one going forward as is, um, but I'm not sure how the rest of the committee feels. I think you're probably correct, but. So Dana, when you say as is, uh, level of fund from last year's article 65? Well, unless the, the board, uh, I think um, it's certainly a policy issue that the board of selectmen would say, well, no, this year we're going to cut them by a third. I, I, I don't know what is, if COVID is affecting some of these programs and they're not going on to the same level they were. Um, if you're thinking that maybe in May we would make some changes to reduce some of these and put some in the budget, maybe some levels will stay the same, but we'll start working on that. Or maybe they come down. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, I think for discussion purposes, I'll populate it based on last year. So at least there's not a blank table. Um, of course, that's absent of the last one that related to that uh, property on Queen Anne that didn't make it. Understood. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> yeah. That was direction from town meeting, I think. <laughs> Correct. Thank you. Okay. So I think we made some progress today. Um, I think um, it's, we have a lot of trouble trying to get meeting space in between stuff, but I think after um, the next two meetings that the finance committee has, and then after the next Monday night meeting that the board of selectmen has where some votes have taken place and so forth, um, we should probably meet next week if we can um, remotely like this so we don't bother anybody. Um, <laughs> rooms and stuff but um if that's possible no I'm, I'm available just let me know all right so dana the effort is going to be to try and meet remote um because it's not just this group it's the impact upon that room um yep. if we all show up we're a group that's greater than the capacity in the griffin room so on and so forth right but, but i um 
as the organizer, I can ensure that we always have a dedicated meeting so we yeah. don't have that disconnect like we did at our last meeting. Right, that's great. That that would be fine. Yep. Sounds good. And, and I, I would say so. uh, we're meeting Friday night, the selectmen are meeting Monday night, any of those other nights, um, if five o'clock doesn't work, um, I'm out of work by 4.30, I could be anywhere from five on. Uh, it could be earlier. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, if we're gonna if we're gonna do it by phone, that's not even an issue. So that's right. you know, as long as it's after when people are available. So yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Uh, anything else for us for tonight? I appreciate everything that everybody did to get to this meeting. I know I had to do a lot to get to this meeting, and I thank you. Yeah. <laughs> mo mo motion to adjourn. Is there a second? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Karen, thank you very much. We can stop recording.